a man is a man. They're arguing about chromosomes and body type and makeup and genitalia and all these different things. I said, they can't even be in agreement on what male female is or what men and women are. So we are supposed to listen to these modern people dictate to us how a successful marriage or a successful relationship or marriage in polygyny, I should say, should work. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. I am Coach Nadir. And I'm Coach Fatima, his wife. And I am Coach Nyla. I am also his wife. We are the founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as the authors of the book, Let's Talk Polygamy Polygamy Uncensored. Uncensored. Uh, With that being said, we get asked a whole lot, you know, what does it mean and how do you find and what does it look like? And it all comes down to, of course, polygamy, right, or polygyny. Um, is what what we actually practice, just to be more specific with the terms. So just in case you don't know, polygamy means a person who has multiple spouses, which can be a man having multiple wives or a woman having multiple husbands, but more specifically, a man married to multiple wives is practicing polygyny, where a woman who is married to multiple husbands, which has been more rare throughout history, is known as polyandry. So of course, when we say polygamy, we're meaning polygyny. But with that being said, we get asked about maturity, who should practice, who shouldn't practice, what does it really look like? You know, because there's been messes made of things. And of course, there's great things and stuff going on and people want to pursue, but don't really know. You know, we didn't have those resources, you know, over 13 years ago ourselves. So we're grateful to be able to share with you after going through a lot of our own stuff and re-engineering and really just sharing with people. But we've come to learn that when it comes to maturity overall, there are five characteristics that kind of stand above the rest for men and for women. So I will let one of you start. What do you think? What, what is uh, <laughs> what is important when it comes to, let's say y'all speak on the men part, you know, when it comes to a man wanting to uh, practice polygyny, what are the characteristics that you see that he should pretty much have in line or striving for? He has to be willing to grow and stretch himself. <laughs> I mean, it, it it's so interesting when women sit in circles and the men will say, I want polygyny, I want polygyny, I want to have more than one wife. Yeah, the idea is great, you know, but that, that the behind the scenes and the day to day work of it and what you have to do for yourself um, is important. Some women fear may fear polygyny because of what it will make of their husband. You know, and then he will be providing for more than one woman in the same areas he's providing for you in. And it's like, and we might think we might be at a loss, but I'm looking at it in retrospect, of course, of what it will make of a man. Like the 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 day-to-day disciplines you must have in order for it to succeed are incredible. They are they are real they really are very detailed. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And being courageous. Oh my gosh, because you have a number of men out there that is like, I'm scared of what the people are going to say, or I'm, you know, don't know how my wife is going to feel about it. And I don't know. And they don't have these courageous conversations. Um, They don't communicate properly, you know, these different things. So to be able to be courageous in your communication, courageous in standing in your leadership, you know, and what you are as a man and who you are as a man. You know, that type of thing. That is very important because if you don't have that, (laughs) it's kind of hard because you can waver any way and you can actually allow other people to sway you in any way. Indeed, you're not really being a man at that point, Um, period. I mean, that's not something that's recognized on a battlefield, in the courtroom, and how, you know, uh, being a coward, that's not something. I mean, you don't have to go back to the late, great Tupac uh, to be discussing that. Um, When it comes to women, I think similarly, Um, Having that growth mindset is extremely 
um, important because we basically have two mindsets and we may go in and out depending on what the subject is in our lives, but really having a growth mindset to understand that a lot of this feminist liberalism is trash mm -hmm. and it's not there for your building up of stuff. So for example, just take me as I am. Look, we all need to grow flaws and all. First, recognizing that not only we have them, but it's our responsibility to work on them, not just as men ourselves, but also our women. And then, so when it comes to accountability and responsibility, there's this whole no shame movement on things that should be shameful. Shame, yeah. You know, when I was coming up, it was shameful if you just sat around, did nothing and end up weighing 300, 400 pounds sitting on the couch. You call it a couch potato. Right. Now you're couch shaming a person or body shaming a person. It's not healthy couch for shaming? you. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like That's vicious. It's couch potato. <laughs> you know? Couch shaming. You know, is that, what that, is that what they tell the doctor when they come in? When you say you're morbidly obese? Well, doctor, you know, you're just body shaming. Overweight. You know, it's this change in thinking and even considering what is a woman nowadays, oh, as Matt Walsh talks about, you know, without diverting <laughs> to go into that type of topic. Yeah. Things have changed a lot when it comes to it, but really having a growth mindset mm -hmm. to understand what is the foundation of society being that nuclear family mm -hmm. and our different roles and respecting those roles. I like that you said that, the growth mindset, and also to understand that growth mindset doesn't mean the modern mindset of it all, <laughs> where you talk about the nuclear family. So people say, well, yeah, I am growing. I'm growing with the times. I'm changing with the times and these different things like that. And we've seen a lot of people with that modern, so to speak, what they're putting out there, what modern women, modern men type of thing, mindset is actually more of the destruction of the family than the building up of or growth of the family. Well, the funny part about the male female thing, they can't even come together on what that is. They can't explain that a female is an adult woman, <laughs> a grown woman, and a man, a man is a man. They're arguing about chromosomes and body type and makeup and genitalia and all these different things. I said they can't even be in agreement on what male female is or what men and women are. So we're supposed to listen to these modern people dictate to us how a successful marriage or a successful relationship or marriage in polygyny, I should say, should work or it can't work. But you're over here at the, you know, well, at the table saying, well, let him be a woman and buy our products he feel and like jump in our person. dresses and entertain and, and carry themselves and run in our races and swim in the pool with us and win all the awards. All of the woman of the year is a man. Those things. And we're supposed to listen to that in regards to this is how polygyny works. This is how marriage works. But that's the modern thinking and <laughs> the argument of just male, female. Yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, I mean, I, I heard an example. Someone's talking, about, okay, cool. Put 10 men and 100 women on an island, see what happens. And uh, put 10 trans women oh. or 100 trans women on an island with 10 men, see what happens. Speak on it. Nature going to go ahead and do its thing. With that being said, I think another one that's very important, of course, when it comes to um, women in particular, is really self awareness because. We know there are basic general things throughout the ages when it comes to men being a little more rational, more logical thinking, mm -hmm. um, and women, of course, being more emotional. And, I, you know, I hesitate to even say that because men are emotional as well. The difference is how it comes out in behavior. You know what I'm saying? So it's being able to try to fall back on those emotions before just letting the emotions or like people say, you know, you wear feelings on your sleeve type stuff or you have, you know, thin skin. These are different, you know, metaphors that are used for that. And they can be up and down. It can fluctuate along with hormonal times of the month and everything else. So anyway, really having that ability to be, uh, you know, self-aware, which is crucial. Yeah, and knowing what to do with it. So yeah, you know, you know the emotions are there and you know they exist, but how do you handle it? How do you put it out there, you know, or are you just, all crazy with it, or can you step, take a step back and say, you know what, I might need some time to evaluate these things. So yeah, I think it's another important. that's it's it's really true because sometimes we need a time out, mm -hmm. like the kids. Sometimes you need to sit yourself down and be quiet, and and that will go right into being cooperative. Oftentimes we want to lead with emotion. Men don't lack emotion, like Coach Nadia was saying. They just don't lead with them <laughs> and just come out and burst out into tears and cry and scream and hoop and, and these different things. But 
uh, understanding that part of being successful in any marriage or in is specifically in polygyny is knowing when you need to be cooperative. Because again, polygyny is not just happening to one person, it's happening to different people in different ways. So our husbands, it's happening to them in the way in which it's gonna happen to men that are married to more than one woman. And it's gonna happen to each wife in a different way. But to understand that we must cooperate, you don't have to, but you again, don't have to be successful in marriage and, and it's specifically in polygyny. Understanding it and, and cooperating with the fact that our husbands have to switch nights and not causing, um, what is that called? Uh, not distraction, but um, a disruption and saying, okay, we agreed on this schedule. We know this must happen. We know he can't be in two places at one time. So are we to cooperate, co cooperate with that or cause destru destruction and disturbance and, you know, all of these things in the family? Or is it better to cooperate? That doesn't mean we don't, you know, have to, um, what is it called when you have to switch things up or reevaluate something with a schedule, for example, but to, to know that that might need to happen sometime somewhere down the road is part of being cooperative too, checking your behavior. Polygamy what? Reporting for, for duty, duty husband, husband, sir. Formation. I am Coach Navir. I am Coach Fatima, his wife. And I am Coach Nyla, I am also his wife. We are the founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships and Polygamy Boot Camp. And if you think that's how polygamy actually works, you are sadly mistaken. <laughs> but you were laughing, right? I know you laughed. That's funny. <laughs> anyway, Woo. we're also the authors of Let's Talk Polygamy Uncensored. Uncensored. And we want to let you know something because when it comes to practicing polygamy, there's this whole fantasy on how that is, at least on the men's side. Like, I'll do this, you're going to be step, lock, and step. Mm, not at all. Not at all. The challenge is when we embarked on our polygynous journey before us raising, you know, 12 children and traveling the world and everything else, it looked a whole lot messier and it was a whole lot more challenging. Yes. All right. So what we've done is we put some a special gift together for you at polygamybootcamp.com to kind of let you know what the pillars are to really practicing it at a high level, especially if you're new or if you just had the idea, or maybe you want to just kind of figure a few things out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Many initial wives believe that they're being replaced or that their husband doesn't love them anymore and they don't really know how to deal with that or their emotions. And many subsequent wives, incoming wives, if you will, or second wives, um, have the feeling of where do they belong or that they are not good enough and they have to do extra in order to get the acceptance and the attention and the affection of their husband. And we dispel all of that. Polygamybootcamp.com. Go there, get your free gift. You will thank us later, especially if you're looking at practicing polygyny in a healthy fashion. Make sure you click the link below Go ahead and get your free gift, and we look forward to sharing more fun stuff <laughs> with you. So shape up <laughs> or ship out. Right. Click the button below. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Peace. Yeah, it's good that you talk about behavior and checking your behavior. Because that's another thing when it comes to men, one of the things that to, to have, and this in both sides too, but definitely in men, is self self control. Especially when yeah. women can be emotional or <laughs> these different things like that. To be able to have some self control about how to deal with certain situations, um, not to get emotional, not to be able, you know, not to go out there and lead with the emotion. Um, I think you said something before about when if a man leads with his emotion or he go out there and just do the things that he feel at the time or whatever, like it, it might be some violence. It'd be some violence. <laughs> it's going to be some violence out there. So to be able to have some self-control um, when it comes to the emotions that can run amok and craziness um, in your family and your household or whatever, but also having that self-control and stating that this is what, you know, I need to do. You know, this, these are the things I need to do. I'm the leader. I'm the imam. I'm the head of, the, you know, the family. And this is how it looks. And people are looking at me. People are watching me. I have to be a leader. And this, in order to, for some people to follow me, I have to have some self-control. Or if I want them to 
you know, follow me in a proper way, in a proper fashion, and the family to grow in a proper way, mm -hmm. then I should be able to control, you know, certain things, especially within myself. Because mm -hmm. the first, you know, thing or first person we should be controlling is ourselves. The only person, I guess, you can control is yourself anyway. <laughs> I love that part because that's important to state. The men and the women, we always say that and we always mean it. The men and the women are not the same. So when men lead with emotion, and if, especially if coach and they go out into the world and leads with emotion, people start to pull out tasers, guns. When we do that, we know we're going to get folded. You know, there's going to be a man that just, you know, the police or whatever the case may be. What you notice when men get upset and they lead with emotion and it's strong, people get scared. And then they start to say, wait a minute, let me put my hand on my taser. <laughs> let me get some cups. Let me get something to protect myself. So it's a, it's actually, I think, a mercy when a man can say, look, I'm not mm -mm. we're going to talk about it. We're going to control ourselves. Because they know what they can do, and we kind of know what they're capable of, but we don't live in that body. But they know, and other other men know. <laughs> so, yes. I mean, self-control is essential for a good life mm -hmm. to begin with. Men, in and of themselves, I mean, we have 10 times the levels of testosterone as women. All right, our frames generally are bigger and stronger than women's. Okay. Of course, I'm not talking about the anomalies just in general across the planet. I mean, I'm about the Hence <laughs> um, why those who are women are continuing to get slaughtered by people that have that XY chromosome running through their blood. Um, which again, not to divert into that whole conversation, but I'm saying that men in general, we have a monopoly on violence. You look yeah. at the 100 most violent yes. people in the world, the men, okay? When you look at those who are genocidal maniacs and so on, they are usually and have been men throughout history. And the only person that's going to stop, the only types of people that are going to stop these type of people are other men that have noble core values and they utilize the same ability to utilize the violence, except they use it for good. All right, so I'm a strong proponent that a man should be able to be a monster, but he's a restrained monster, it's kind of like the Hulk. You have to be able to defend your family. You have to be able to protect. Um, you have to be able to fall back and evaluate a situation to make sure you don't end up doing something you uh, end up regretting or putting people in harm's way that should not be in harm's way. That's where emotions do not serve us right on the side. We can find out, okay, this is an emotion. What is it? Is it relevant? Is it not? It's just my body sending a chemical reaction throughout my neural association. What? Okay, cool. I need to focus on the main issue. So having self-control is extremely important. And there's a huge lack of it when we talk about things such as domestic violence or every 18 seconds, a woman goes to the ER for treatment from some type of intimate partner violence. Not all the way, all the time, you know, is it uh, women going in because a man did it, but I'm just, again, making the point that lack of self-control people, children, families, societies, countries, get hurt bad. And again, that leads to the destruction of the family and talking about polygyny in particular. This is an ancient form of marriage that has many modern day solutions, but it takes men who my wife say are twice the man to really be able to do it because a lot of people have become so punkified and sissified these days that it's hard to find a man or you have to classify things now as a masculine man which is redundant or should be redundant in and of itself, in and of itself. Nevertheless, self-control is paramount to the success just as a man married or not. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a serious topic. I'm just saying these things are real. I agree. You yeah, know, people I'm look at polygamy it. as this, oh, it's just a big old party and this and that. And you see three people, which y'all don't see is the dozen <laughs> that have come from us. You know, the generational things that we've already set up and put in line and, and so on. So when we're talking about family, we're absolutely talking about family. Mm -hmm. All right. Not just three consenting adults, if you will, like many people hypothesize or fantasize about. I was going to say they're getting that from the movies because <laughs> they think it's just the three of us. And tell them, we have we have other roles <laughs> we play. So, yes. Which goes to the fifth thing for the men <laughs> is being driven. You know, it takes a driven man to run 
a family period, but, you know, a polygynous family or a continuing, a continuously growing family. Yeah, it takes someone that's driven, someone that is going to um, see what needs to be done and have a big picture mentality and see what's further out (laughs) than anybody else so they can move forward and take the family with them to build the legacy, to, you know, create the lifestyle that is going to be possible for the family to live in and to thrive in. Yeah. And don't confuse that with being a tyrant because some people think that that's what it means. We mean strong, firm leadership, you know, that's, he's going to make decisions for his family in a way in which men need to do that. And some women think because they see coach Nadir sitting between us or we're wives in polygyny, that there's this get over here and y'all work and get it done and whoosh, this thing. And I'm like, no, that's not the, we're not talking about that. And being this, this awful uh, leader, we're talking about a respected role in the family of husband, of father, and knowing what that leadership looks like it's because they, you've been coined some things. And I'm like, no, that's not polygyny. That's something you created in your mind that you think it is. And we just want to, I just want to say that, especially as a wife, that's an initial wife. And I've had to coach some sisters. I'm like, this, I don't know where you're getting this idea that there's this iron fist that's brought down just because polygyny is in your husband's life or in your life now. No, that's not it. So I just want to say that it's yes, driven in a healthy, healthy way. Inshallah. Yeah, I see driven as meaning ambitious. You know what I'm saying? Somebody has goals that's moving in a certain direction and can lead. So somebody that's driven, I think Michael Jordan has a book uh, titled Driven. Yeah. You see MJ, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The GOAT, greatest of all time, right? Yeah. So making sure that you have the ambition to go and to grow. I mean, I've seen things where there are men who say, all right, look, you're going to get a job and you can get a job. I had this job and we're going to make six yeah. figures and have this job. Like, that's not something that even makes a lot of sense or is even attractive. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need them to go ahead and bring money in in order to go ahead and put it all together in the pot. Like, right. you know, versus having ambition and raising your standards to go ahead and grow it and, and doing things and set stuff up how you want to. You know what I'm saying? It's best for the family. You know, or the man that stays at home and then his wives go work and he reads books all day and says he teaches them. Some of y'all might have seen that um, thing on a reality show, something like that. Nevertheless, uh, being driven or having ambition is extremely important. In other words, what's the, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? What's the point of building a family if you're not trying to leave it better off than the way you found society? If you're not leaving gifts for the future? You know, there's a number of people that are <laughs> that are procreating, that aren't leaving any type of gift for the future, have no idea who their offspring are, you know, and would leave your children who are upset, who are emotionally damaged and everything else. We have that in a lot of our communities. Yeah. Again, just one of the other reasons why uh, men should step up in these different areas and qualify to be able to do it on a higher level. These are just some of the, the pillars or the characteristics that shine when it comes to be able to to recognize maturity because there are certain things that are, you know, being said and done and challenged. They don't know. So that's our job to really share to, uh, you know, share the information so that you can be educated on what it actually takes. Because is it easy? No. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Are you qualified for it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But hopefully the information that we're sharing with you can let you know to put the different puzzle pieces and everything together to get it right. Because the rewards that can come from something that you're working on and working toward building can live far beyond you and have a positive impact. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that being said, when it comes to finding out more information about our classes, different things that we're doing, whether it's counseling, coaching or or whatnot, then be sure to check out polygamyeducation.com. Polygamyeducation.com. And what we want you to put in the comments below, because, you know, we'd like to recognize those people who have watched the entire video. Mm-hmm. They support it. They're serious. You're probably taking notes and stuff like that. <laughs> you're probably nodding or you shaking your head or something. But, we, you know, if you rock with us, we appreciate that. So in the comments below, put maturity in polygamy. polygamy. Maturity in polygamy. And of course, if you have any questions or 
ideas or suggestions of things that you want to learn about, feel free to do it there or catch us in our live classes on our OPR campus at polygamyeducation.com. So we're going to rock out with GLC. Make sure you're growing intentionally. Loving fearlessly. And connecting on a higher level every, every single, single day. day. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.